Beloved Mary, it was just that, and I never thought that I, I never compared him with any with Zoroaster or anyone. And it was for me a very natural thing to think of him as my beloved. I always felt because I'll tell you why when I felt that that in '44 when we were asked to come to Mary for Mary's birthday celebration of Mary's birthday. On that day, Baba asked us, I, I was 12 at that time, and he asked all the young ones to come into Mena's room where he was sitting on the bed with one leg dangling and one leg on the bed. And there was in front of him a box full of Baba buttons. And then uh, he, one by one we would go inside. And I don't know what happened with everyone, I just know myself. Then I went inside and, I, and Baba took out one button from the box and Mera was standing next to me on near the bed and he gave it to Mera and I said, but I am being called inside and I have, I have to get it. Why is Baba giving it to Mera? So I was a little puzzled and then I saw a smile on Baba's face and he turned towards Mera, gave it to me, gave it to her and Mera pinned it on me. And where I was always, beloved Baba is giving it to me. So I always known Baba as beloved Baba. So for me, there was no comparison with any God, any of his advent name, but just beloved Baba. That was my very first time, which I felt that it was only for me. I don't know anything about my family. I know they love Baba, that's all. But I, for me, it was the first time. Real touch from Baba and Mera too. One thing I felt that was uh, in the year 1947 when Baba visited Surat. And Baba asked a few of his people from Bombay to come over. And my name was with my mother. And my very good friend, she's no more. Latin. She was at that time always Talati. And she and I were very good friends because we always used to be uh, getting together from that time, uh, from the early, early years. Any Baba function or any Baba gathering, or Baba's birthday or something. So we would always be together. And she and I were so happy to be there in Surat. And in the night, there was a big program. And then it was a I tell you, Surat was a real good stronghold of Parsi community. And they didn't want it, Baba, in their hometown. So they tried to break up that program, which was arranged by the Baba Lakas in Surat. And one thing was that, that there was a Parsi singer, if you all know him, his, his name was Kariman Alajari. And he was there to sing. So when he started singing, there was not much, but always there was some commotion going on in the hall. And we were asked to come and sit near the stage where Baba was. It was the night time. And we were so much enthralled with Baba's verses and the music and everything that we hardly cared for all that noise, commotion which was coming from everywhere. And then suddenly, around midnight, we could hear the benches being thrown and making lots of noise. And the fellow who was giving up, uh, the musician, Kariman, he looked at Baba and we could see what Baba was trying to say. So I would always be looking at Baba, I always felt that his face attracted to me very much. So I was looking at Baba. Just go on. Just go on. Please don't stop the music. Just go on. I am here. I'll see to it. Nothing happens. 
So the first time it happened, it was some big noise and everyone started getting out. And again, everyone sat down. We had more music. And then second time it happened with real loud thuds. And Baba still asked the singer Karina, go on singing, go on singing. I love your singing. And then the third time it happened, that Baba called us on the stage and asked us to say the Gujarati art, which is known as Bujavena. And we sang it with such gusto. I know I have never sang that before. It was such I want, because Baba had asked us what we want to sing. Because at home we were singing very quietly or slowly or something. But this was the best time that I knew to sing before Baba. Gujarati art. And I was so happy about it. So that was my second thing. I said, Baba can do anything. You know, he's, he's our beloved. He can do anything. All these people, they don't like Baba, so what? We love Baba. And that is more important. We don't care for others. We don't care for others. Baba. It was very much so because I, I was staying in Namida Economy with 250 families around. And I was brought up there. And uh, at the entrance, from the entrance to the opposite wall was a Baba picture. And all our neighbors would come in the house, their children would come down, as if they had never seen Baba photo. You know, it was like a Baba had given a little curtain over their eyes, not to see that picture of Baba at all. And nobody asked because, you see, everyone was afraid that well, Baba is something kind of, some kind of a cult. So, we didn't care much for them. As youngsters, neither we did care when we could go there. Because I remember there was a hardly any, not a single family, I should say, in Namida colony who believed in Melba. So I think this is more than enough to let others have a chance. <laughs> Crystallize in your mind's heart that when Baba is in fact from the world of God. And it is in particular on the whole period of time in order to be happy. They are asking. Yes. <laughs> Just a few minutes back, I mentioned that it was at about 9 o'clock at night on 18th of October 1984. I was about to turn in. Something happened. I don't know what happened, but in my heart of heart, I said to myself that as of now, Baba is the only God I know. At that time, we were in Puna, and Milivet Baba was at Guru Prasad. And each morning, each morning my cousin brother Eraj and I, we would walk over to Guru Prasad. Baba had ordered orders that Sam has come home on me. I was a merchant buried for nearly 30 years. And bring him along with you. So on the way I would be asking Eraj many questions that bothered me. And one of them was this, that Eraj such and such a thing happened last night. What exactly what was the reason behind it? I don't know whether my cousin was joking or not, but Neeraj told me that Milan and Baba has set, set an alarm clock in each and every hour, and maybe your alarm rang on 18th of October 9, 1884. Jai Baba. Okay. I accepted Milan Baba as Avatar from my childhood. And since then I have never doubted that he is not God. And I am 100% sure that he is God and he is not God. And what he, I think it as a gift from him that uh, I uh, never worry. God Baba said, don't worry, be happy. I don't worry. And he has bestowed me another thing to be completely resigned to his will. 
from I will narrate one incident from my student life. I was a third first class student with my name in merit list in colleges and university. And it was my MSc final month of December. And I had my final exams in March. And I was down with a chronic bronchitis. And doctor said that if I took a physical and mental strain, then I will be not be able to appear in my final examinations. As I have told you that I used to write to beloved Baba letters. So my father has instructed me to inform even minor things in our life to beloved Baba. So I wrote to him that uh, I am sick and doctors have said that uh, if I take mental and physical strain, then I will not be able to appear in my final examination. But I don't worry. I have left everything to you. And what will happen? I will fail. Or I will come second. And my father will scold me. That's all that is going to happen. So I don't worry. And I have left everything to you. So Baba answered through Bhauji that Baba is very happy that you don't worry. And I should read according to doctor's instructions. As, as far as I can read, then I should try my best and don't worry. I was not worrying so Baba okay that don't worry so I need not worry. And March came, final, our practical, I had uh, MSc in organic chemistry. So three days practical exams I had to attend, standing for eight or nine hours. And in this condition, I had to give my practical <laughs> examinations. My head said that bring a packet of glucose and take it before coming and keep it with you throughout examination. For three days, I attended my examination. I, I did not have any sort of pain in my legs, standing for eight or nine hours. I did not have pain. I had sound sleep. Then my theory papers. The second paper I left three. I only saw three questions and left two questions. And then again, I wrote to Bilal Baba that I have left two questions out of five. And I don't worry. <laughs> and informing this, I went home. And you see, this is my experience. When you don't worry, Baba has to worry for you. This incident in my life. Prove this, that then Baba has to worry for us. I went home and I was totally without worry. But Baba wrote a letter. Bhauji, Baba asked that what is the result of Meher Jyoti? And one week before, I had a dream and I saw my result. First division with fourth position according to merit and after a week my result was declared and I was first division in fourth position. So this incident, this incident in my life, I did not worry before and after this I am 100% sure that he is worrying for me. So I did not worry at all. Avtar Mahat Baba Jai Baba, it is very difficult to say or confess a pinpoint that when I accepted it, because I think that this would be blasphemous to say that I have accepted it. Whereas the fact is this that He has accepted us. And when He has accepted us, then every day it is a reinforcement of His love. Our faith is increasing more and more. He remains the same. Our love is giving more confidence, more confidence, and we are sure 
that every day is a new day. We attribute certain things as miraculous things, but I feel that miracles are never repeated. If you have one kind of miracle, the same kind of miracle would not be repeated and another person would not have the same kind of miracle. But what is repeated is his compassion. His compassion is repeated time and again and what we attribute as miracles, it is not a miracle but it is his compassion and in every difficult time he proves that he is there and that doesn't need any extra acceptance, any more attribute, any more acceptance but his presence is more and more and that is what Baba has said that make me your constant companion. So even we are not able to make him our constant companion but he is more anxious to become our constant companion by appearing us, appearing in our life again and again through these situations, difficult situations which he allows us to surmount with his help. And these are the things which keep our contact intact with him. So I don't think in my life there is some particular point where I can tell you that I have accepted him or his totality is revealed because right from the very first day when I saw his photograph, he came in my life in totality, in absoluteness and there was no further proof which was needed or no further point in my life when he did unfold or manifest his greatness and glory more than that the first instance. Thank you so much. Pramila, we introduced you earlier. Pramila is Gokaran's wife. And our first question was how you came to Mahir Baba. And the second is if, if there was any incident in your life that cemented in your heart and in your mind that Mahir Baba is a great God. As Gokaran said, if there was no big time theory, you can say it happened over a period of time. There was nothing yet. So, first, how you came to Mahir Baba, and secondly, if any incident took place in your life. Jai Baba. I'm thankful to the audience which has given me this opportunity to share what Mahir Baba has given in my life. And uh, being the junior most among these persons who are old Baba lovers, I am really junior to them. And the juniors always come at the end to fold the carpet. <laughs> so, I am here just to fold the carpet and I have no great philosophies to share with you all. Once again, I am also thankful to Gokaran's elder brother who proposed the marriage proposal to my father. Had it not been, I would not have come to know Meher Baba. Meher Baba was knowing me, but I would not have come to know Meher Baba. When Gokaran's brother gave the proposal, put the proposal before my father about the marriage, then my father was little upset or he was little worried I should say because in India the proposal always comes from the girl's side and it was coming from the boy's side. So my father was thinking there must be something wrong with the boy. That's why they are bringing the proposal and at the same time they are again and again asking what you have decided. So he wanted to find out what is the, whether this man is qualified for my daughter or not. He just found, tried his best to find out and this was all Baba's plan. He was having a friend who was a staunch Baba lover, Nafri from Bhopal. Most of the people know him. So my father just came to know that Gokaran was Baba lover. So he shared his worries with Nafriji and Nafriji said, I know this boy very well and both of us attended 
Baba's east-west gathering together and he sat next to me when we were there for darshan. So I know the boy. But, and there's no, you shouldn't have any doubt, but still if you have any doubt, then why don't you write to Mayor Baba? And just find out whether you have any doubt and that could be cleared or not. And my father, even not knowing much detail about Mayor Baba, wrote a letter to Mayor Baba taking address from Nafre. And Mayor Baba replied, your daughter should be married to this man only. And Mayor, my father did not share this with any of our family members. He fixed the marriage. The marriage was settled and he also instructed my father to send the invitation card so that Baba could send his blessings on the day of wedding. And my father did that and Baba, as he promised, sent the blessings through a telegram. And my father, just taking it to be an ordinary greeting, he just put them along with the other greetings. After our marriage, we got all the greetings and in that we found Baba's blessing telegram. And Gokran asked me, how did this, this came? And I said, I don't know. Then we asked our father and then my father narrated the whole thing. That it was my doubt which made me write to Mer Baba. And Mer Baba confirmed that your daughter should be married to this man only. And he has promised to send the blessings and this is a blessing from him. Thank you Mer Baba for giving this blessing to both of us and bringing us together in this world to share in his work whatever we could. <coughs> then after marriage, we I have two daughters. One is a doctor and second one is mechanical engineer. There is a five years gap between the two. When my elder daughter was born, we informed Baba. And Baba again sent the blessing telegram for my elder daughter. Just after five minutes, there was another telegram which had the same wordings. My love blessings to your baby daughter and Rumina. We thought this would be a telegraphic mistake. And we were happy because Baba's blessing telegrams would always be with the name Mehr Baba. Later, somebody else from the Mandli would write that Baba says so and so, like that. But telegrams would always be as they are signed by Mehr Baba. So we were happy. We have two telegrams for one daughter signed by Mehr Baba. So we kept them. And exactly after five years, my younger daughter was born and Baba was not in body. He knew that if she came to know that my elder sister was blessed with the Lord and I am not, then what she would have felt. So who could know this? Only the Lord would know that after five years this problem is going to arise. So why shouldn't I solve it right now? <laughs> so that's how we solved. And last thing I would like to share that we would write always to Mayor Baba. I think both of us together have, is it 57? 57 letters we wrote to Baba and we have been answered either through one or the other Mandi. So, <coughs> because most of the letters we would write in Hindi and how she would respond to it. So in one of the letters, I must have mentioned some of the problems of my life. Because you know, when you are run a family, you have one thing or the other, either servant problem or something or the other, you cannot manage with the time, something like that. I don't exactly remember, so I must have wrote it. And because at most of the places, I would not be able to accompany Gokharan because I had a responsibility of my brothers and sisters also who were with me for their education. 
So someone has to sacrifice. Someone has to stay at home and take care of the family. So it could be like that only. So the, a letter comes from Baba and where he has written Urmila, my name is Urmila. Urmila was Lord Rama's younger brother Lakshman's wife. And he wrote, Urmila never went to Ra with Ram when he went for exile. She never went, but she was never away from Ram's heart. So remember, you are my Urmila. Never leave this place vacant. So what more can I expect that he has not put his for him that I should believe he is a god but since Lord Rama's time on the seven avatars he has declared before me that I am the same one who has come again and again and who is helping you all through all your problems. So leave them all to me. You would lose them. I know how to use them. <laughs> One more round to go. I'm I'm giving three options to each of the six. They can pick and choose one of the three and speak on that. Either a humorous incident directly connected with you and Bear Baba, or an order given by Bear Baba directly to you, or if if at all Bear Baba scolded you. One of the three. We can choose whichever you like. Over to you. Amrit, the mic is for you. Yes. <laughs> I'm permitting the left question answer. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll repeat. I'll repeat. Yes, I'll repeat. I'll repeat for the benefit of all six. Either a humorous incident directly connected with you and Mayor Baba. Or if Mayor Baba gave you an order, or if at, if at all, if Mayor Baba was upset with you and he kind of scolded you, any one of the three. Okay, I'll tell you a short story. When I was, uh, before marriage, when I was living in Mehrazad, often we would call Mayor Baba's room, depend, till usually around tea time. So one day, uh, Katie, Katie Irani, who was, he's, you know, no more now, but Baba's man, who used to come from Bombay and tell Baba all the time very funny stories and all that. And we'll all sit down and laugh. <clears throat> Katie left back from Bombay, she was still working. And Baba all of a sudden asked me, Amrit, tell us a joke. Tell me a joke, I want to laugh. And I'm a teenager at that time, that, you know, had no idea what type of joke to tell me, here, Baba. And I started shaking and I said, oh dear, you know, like uh, my jokes are. And Baba said, yes, yes. And Baba is lying on the bed and he said, yes, tell me, tell me a, a, a funny story, a joke, joke, I want to laugh. Because I was there for the reason to, for this wedding to be arranged, I always remember the story about my mother and father, how they got married. And it's a very funny story. Uh, it, of course, when you know those days, it was completely 100% arranged marriage. And the boys and girls, they weren't kind of allowed to meet before they got married. But somehow my mother and father, as my father was, it's a very long story, but I'm going to make it too short. I told Baba a long version with an exaggerated version, been, you know, added because to make it very funny. And. Uh, Said so Baba, you know, my mother lived in mountains and father was in Dehradun, which is in plains. But when our father came to know this girl, been arranged for him, he completely refused to marry a woman without seeing. And it was unheard of. You, your parents told me, your family priest told you that you marry so and so, you say yes. That's how it used to be in those days. And, but my father, being a revolutionary, being a from different time, being from a slightly bigger city, he completely refused to marry the girl without meeting. And when the message went to my mother's side of the family, the boy is done, not ready to marry. So my maternal grandfather said, okay, let the boy come here. Let me interview him first. 
And if we like him, then we'll call our daughter and in front of us they will talk. My mother, who was no less, she seems very simple, very sweet as she is, but she said, oh, this boy wants to see me and marry me only if, you know, after interviewing me. And uh, what about me? So what she did when she realized that uh, the boy that my father will be coming to my grandfather's house, she jumped out of her back window and went and climbed on a tree. And she knew the, the boy with her family will be coming. There was only one path coming towards my grandfather's house. And she climbs on the tree. And those days, mountainside, there were no cars and things like that. The family had ponies and little horses. And they were sent for my father and his entourage to come. And they had to come under that tree where the path is. And when they were coming towards, I hope you understand what I'm saying. So when they were coming towards the house, under the tree, the horse saw something on the tree which had my mother sitting and she wanted to see the boy first. She's only 16. And the horse saw something, got frightened. And started and lifted his front legs and my father fell and my mother was on top of the tree. She got so scared with all that you know, commotion and noise and horse scream, she falls on him. <laughs> and they were all found together in village in those days. And they were persuaded, you know, of course my father liked her and they was said, yeah, it's a true story by the way, but maybe, you know, a little bit more colorful than. Anyway, they were found together and parents wanted them to get married right away. They said, no way, there will be any interviews and there's that other. So when I told Baba this story, Baba was lying in the bed, he's laughing, smiling, his face went completely red. He said, very good. Here I'm getting worried about how to arrange your marriage and how many guests and have what to food to give and all that. You just go outside and that tamarind tree outside window, you just climb there. When Dara comes, just jump on it. <laughs> and you'll be, you know, you'll be declared married. So that's the little story I told Baba. Okay, uh, can I take a little bit more time? So it's, uh, there's another story when Baba is arranging this wedding. We were sitting in a monthly hall. Tara still is in England. I'm only there, you know, from our both from our side. And Baba, he's full monthly, men monthly, Dr. Goyer, because of being doctor, and money, money standing next to Baba. And there's uh, most of the time whenever Baba had any occasions and things like they will call his uh, the, the, this close man, uh, followers Sharosh and Vilo, Sharosh and Vilo Irani. They did most of the time any functions. They did a catering kind of you know for Baba. They were completely with Baba. He, he called them my monthly. And uh, so after in monthly hall. Baba arranging for the long list of uh, Baba lovers will be invited. Then Baba said to Shirosh and Vilo, like, what about the food? So Shirosh and Vilo, before Shirosh could say anything, Vilo said, yes, Baba, we'll do the food. We'll have some samosas, some little wafers, little, uh, of course, uh, Arnavaz, Dada Chanja will be bringing the cake. And there will be some cold drinks. For the cold drinks, what we'll do, we'll bring this, uh, because the budget was very limited, in the, you know, with Baba, and Baba always wanted everything to be practical. So he says, so we'll say Baba, and then we'll bring this orange squash bottle, and we call this very British word, squash is like concentrated lemon or orange, or whatever, you put it in the bowl, uh, you know, in a bowl, and fill it up with the water, and it goes the wrong way. So Sharosh looked at Vilu and then looked at Baba Baba. It's a wedding, it's not a, just a birthday party or something. No, we'll have Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola used to be a big deal those days because it was foreign drink and was more than a party drink. So Coca-Cola. So Vilu said, but Sharosh, you shut up. It's let, in front of Baba and it's, let me arrange. I always, you know, and you have no idea. And we have to be under budget and all that. It will be orange wash and Sharosh, Looked at Vilo and says, no, Vilo, it will be Coca-Cola. Before you realized, 
They forgot about Meher Baba sitting there with his other mandli and Baba sitting there with her looking at these two with a frown on his head. And these two started arguing right from the Meher Baba. Coca-Cola, orange, Coca-Cola, orange. Money and used to tell this story regularly at the Samba at Mandli Hall to other Baba people. And after, you know, this argument became quite big. So Baba clapped. He said, you know, what's happening? He said, Baba, just recently this governor came and, you know, this one came and that one came. I did big, big party and the shores always interferes. He has no idea. So Baba said, but you're not doing for governors or big, big uh, politicians and things like that. You're doing this party for me. She said, yes, my Baba, I know you, I'm doing for you, but, but there's no, no budget. So Baba said, don't worry, Vilu. Uh, what we'll do, we'll get half orange wash and half Coca-Cola, try to, you know, solve the problem. But it wasn't enough for Vilu. She also said, I'm quite in the Vilu. She was a very short lady, very jovial, very... And she said, yes, Baba, you're right, but nobody will drink orange wash. They all will go for Coca-Cola. So Baba said, is that right? But she, Vilu, when the Coca-Cola is over, what are they going to do? They will go for a squash. And that's how the, 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 this uh, very funny incident from the Baba was solved. Uh, Jai Baba. Jai Baba. I'm very sorry, I'm not good at all in jokes or anything. Because I'll tell you one day when we were in Guru Prasad, we were all sitting there and Baba was looking very tired. And he said, Why don't you entertain me? Give us a song, give me a joke, something or the other. We were very few at that time. So, everyone looked at each other, nobody came out. Then there was one lady, she was a little fat lady, she said, Baba, if you've got harmonium, I can sing a song to you. So, harmonium is brought over, and she sits there and sings. And everyone is singing, what kind of song she is singing? You know, nobody could follow it properly, and the tune was not so good and all that. And Baba was not so pleased that we were making all these faces. So he says, give me another song. You know, and just for that, Baba wanted us to hear her sing again. And he says, then he explained, she's singing from her heart, you know? So let her come, let her come to me, I will give her an embrace. So I was thinking, and then we were all talking later on. And he said, Wish we had known something or the other. We would have had at least a hug from Baba, whether our voice is good or not, whether the song is, is good or not. We would have at least had a hug. So, so from that day onwards, I said, no, I can never sing, I can never do anything. Let me stick to it. So, but I'll tell you something about the order. <coughs> when uh, John and I were engaged, Baba was in uh, Bombay at that time in America. And Anava said, we'll send food for her. So we had arranged for Jal's mother to cook the food because she was a real, real good cook. I'm not at all. I don't like to cook. Also. So she uh, had prepared some chicken and, and fish. You know, as the passes, they have to have meat, fish, chicken, custard, rice, dal, and everything possible in one meal. Remember that. So that's... So we had sent that food, and uh, Baba had uh, asked him, what was it? And he opened up everything and said, and then he saw chicken and he says, I don't think we should have chicken. So he kept that aside, not to have it for the mandri or anybody. And when we came to him, and then, then Baba called us, and Baba said, remember, at any of your functions, functions, huh? not daily life, at any of your functions, you should not have chicken as a dish. Like if it is a birthday party or any good occasion that you are celebrating, don't ever have chicken. But this is not the right thing. Then this was just an order to us. But now at the time of our wedding, it was really something. It was my mother who said, because Papa had said no chicken, so no chicken. But Jal's mother and Jal's two grannies were there. Good, I had no grannies. So Jal's grannies were saying, but how can a Parsi wedding be without chicken? Have you ever heard of it? And then I said, no chicken. You don't want chicken. I said, okay, if you want to have it, have it on another day, a chicken dish or something or the other. 
He said, no, on the day of the wedding only you should have chicken also. All along with the fish and meat and everything. And then, I tell you, it was a real tough fight for Jan, not for me. Because I was very angry, but Papa saw the means Papa saw and you can't just break it. So, Jan was, his family would say, no, we'll have to have chicken. And I said, no chicken. You see, so he was in between the two of our families. And later on, I don't know how it happened. Just a few days before, maybe not even a week, Chance for the said, if God doesn't want to have it. I said, it is not me, I said, it is not me, it's my Baba's order. And I want you also to obey because your son is getting married to me. I'm not going to get married otherwise, <laughs> if you have chicken. So this is my thing that I had an order. And then I have another order, not to drink at all, never in my life. So that chicken thing was very personal order. So don't feel you don't have a chicken for occasions. Everything was for the cause. Yeah. It was such a such a model. Jai Baba. Thank you so much. Jai Baba. I remember as a child when I came from Bombay to Pune and was staying in the upper press. Every day we used to say Baba's prayers and aunties. And in that, we used to say Pujave Narati. <coughs> and I used to say, sing the aunty, but instead of saying Narkuda, in Pujave Narati we have a verse which says, Na Khuda, Hamara Na Khuda hai mehen papa chen mi ge badu. I used to say, Hamara Ma Khuda, and I had lost my mother very recently, and this four and a half year old child was longing to, for the mother. So I was calling my beloved Baba Ma Khuda. And my aunts and cousins used to argue with me, no, no, you must say Nahuda. I said, why should I say that he is not God? In Gujarati, if you say, you are Nahuda, means you are not God. But I say, he is my mother. That's the, I, I see no wrong. But this all complaint went to beloved Baba. And then for some occasion or the other we were called at Meraban, Upper Meraban, where Eric's mother was staying in the ashram. Sam's mama was staying also there. Other aunts were there. I come from Upper Press. Somehow, I don't know how we reached Upper Merabad. And then, because they all had said my complaint to Baba, Baba told, Baba was sitting on the divan and he just said, Come on, sing Bujave Narati. So I folded my hands, closed my eyes, and I started singing to beloved Baba. And I was so engrossed that I forgot that I am singing in front of beloved Baba. I said instead of Nakuda, I said Ma. After the whole arti was over. Baba's money, sister money, explain to me what Nakuda means. And I said to Baba, I asked my family, what is the meaning of Nakuda? They did not know the answer to it. So I said, no, you are God. Then how can I say you are not God? That is why I said, Mahuda, Baba, I just lost my mother and I feel that you are everything to me. 
Baba nodded and then Mali explained to me that Nakuda means he is the captain of the ship. So, the previous line. Yes. My boat in which I am going, Baba is the captain and he will take me through what I have. And then when it was explained to me, I said to Baba, they did not know themselves what it meant. And that is why I argued. But now you have told me, I will say Nakuda. Then everything, the whole Aarti was over. Baba called me close and gave me a tight embrace. Baba's embraces were so, so touching that I cannot explain to you how it used to just penetrate to your heart and me there. And so I am very thankful to beloved Baba. My family was Baba lover from the time beloved Baba used to speak. So if anybody asked me when did I come to Baba, I always used to tell them before I was born. Because my father, before getting married, he was Baba lover already. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. As I just mentioned, I was a merchant marine for 30 years. And I used to enjoy my life as a merchant marine. I was very liberal with things like uh, scotch and soda, <laughs> rum and uh, things like that. Beloved Papa knew that Sam had a liking for that. It was about 2 30 in the afternoon at prayer, Guru Prasad in Puna. We were all sitting at the feet of our beloved when his class fell off. And he said, Sam, we are going to commercialize and his Papa. He must be going to farm now. this question, what sort of a God is he that is teaching this young boy to drink? But no, from that day onwards, my quantity of alcohol came down to only this much. And if I was invited to a party or anywhere else, I would take that much of alcohol and keep filling up the glass with either soda water or something like that. So that no one should ever point out, hey, stand your glass is empty, go and have another round. That was not, there were many other orders given. Uh, it literally has tied me down with all sorts of spirits. As I have always mentioned, the words of Salamati uh, Rumi, the relationship between the lover and the beloved is so very confidential and so very close that no one has to be involved. That's a very big difference there. That is my relationship. Yeah, Baba. <laughs> I used to write letters to Baba and in 
know, I uh, never wrote any about any problems in my life, but only jokes, numerous incidents. Uh, for example, queries between my parents and other jokes. And Bhauji used to write that how much Baba enjoyed them. So one of the jokes which I wrote and Bhauji, uh, uh, Bhauji wrote in answer that Baba liked it very much. That I am telling you. A Sardar Kapoor went to a party with their little son. And the son uh, told his mother in Hindi that usko hai, that he wants to urinate. And mother did not like it. She felt very ashamed and asked his son, asked her son, that in future, whenever he, he has a will to urinate, he, to, he should say that, Mother, I want to sing. And she will take him to the toilet. Since then, it was between them that when a boy felt to urinate, he told his mother that he wants to sing. One day, mother was ill and the boy was sleeping with his father. In the midnight, boy said, Papa, I want to sing. And father said, No, you should not sing at this time. Your mother is very sick. And she is sleeping, she will awake. So don't sing now. Then said, No, Papa, I want to sing just now. And Papa was very uh, worried, hurt. Then he said, Okay. Then uh, the son started crying very loudly. Papa, I want to sing just now and very loudly. I want to sing very loudly. Then father said, Okay, sing in my ear. <laughs> Bhauji wrote in answer that beloved Baba laughed so much, so much that his face was pink from laughing. And during my sickness, which I have told you, Baba, the doctor has sent me to take a raw egg. And I had never taken egg. I wrote to beloved Baba that the doctor said this. And Baba wrote me and asked me to take raw egg, not as a egg, but as a medicine for me. So it was an order from Baba and I could follow it. Then someone put a raw egg in my mouth and I closed my mouth and just took it in my mouth. And second order Baba gave me the, when I did my MSc. As my father has left his job to do Baba's work and financial condition at home was very bad, I decided to join a job at Hamirpur and my father wanted that I should join PhD. When I said to put my point and father to that, he decided that I should write to Baba and do whatever Baba asked me to do. I wrote him that uh, this is the final situation at home and I want to support my father by uh, doing job, not PhD. Baba wrote an answer, Bhauji, Baba chahate hain ki aap research kare, kyunki is pe aapki adhyatmik pragati hai. Baba wants you to join PhD, because in it your spiritual progress. So is it for joining a reputed research institute at Lucknow for 13 years and I was a scientist for five and a half years. Now I am a housewife. And from worldly point of view, worldly point of view, you see what is my worldly problem. But Baba meant spiritual progress and I have this feeling that whatever happens in my in our life, it is for our spiritual progress, not from worldly point of view. Worldly point of view, you can say that I am short first class, merit holder and uh, every, all sort of talented person. 
but but from that i am a great fellow because i am now housewife so whatever baba gives whatever happens in our life it is for our spiritual progress because baba has come for that to see to look after our spiritual progress not our this worldly affairs avatar mahar baba ki jai It is in uh, 1963. There was a darshan in Guru Prasad, and it was a weekend darshan. And different groups from India were called on different dates, and it was the time for North Indian group that I attended in 1963 in Guru Prasad Hall. There would be a large gathering, and some programs would be there, singing and other activities would go on. And in the morning, Baba would meet, and after lunch there would be break in afternoon again. We would be called there, and every time, every morning, it was four five days darshan program. So first thing that Baba would do each day, he would ask people, "Did you sleep well? Have you had nice dinner and properly ate?" These were the conventional question, and. till that time i had never any opportunity to talk to baba face to face i would write to him lot of letters and all my letters would be responded nothing was never remain unresponded but i never had any opportunity to talk to him so for 2 3 days i observed that this is this could be a good excuse to talk to him that every day he is asking people and some people He is not pointing out to this person or that person. Anybody can stand up and tell Baba that I could not have proper sleep last night. I could not have proper dinner last night. And then he would ask questions: Why? What happened? So that would be a good excuse to talk to him. So I thought that this this is a nice thing that I should forego my meal today and tomorrow I would have a chance to talk to him. And when he asks me. Why I did not have proper meal? Then I can tell him that it is because I wanted to talk to you. <laughs> so then I was young to forego a meal was a difficult thing. So we were stay, staying nearby Guru Prasad in a dharam shala, and around there there were lot of lodgings, hotels, and that time we would not believe that it was so called rice plate. Rice plate is a limited meal. But it is full, and that time it was just for two rupees. You can have the full meal, and that I was taking every day, morning, lunch time, and dinner time. But nearby there was a hotel which was a fancy kind of hotel, and it was called Barshahi Lodge, Emperor's Lodge. And in five rupees they gave a sumptuous meal, lot of things, ten, fifteen types of things, and as much as you would like. That rice plate would have a limited meal, but this would have enormous meal. So I thought that today from lunch I should go to this Barshai Lodge, eat, eat much as much as I can, so that in the night I forego my dinner and I had a, a chance to talk to Baba. So I went there and I ate my food, and the night food, the dinner I escaped. And next morning I'm just sitting, waiting for the order. The question that was the third or fourth day of darshan program, and unusual to Baba's trait, Baba's behavior, Baba's style of asking people. That day, I tried to look into his eyes, and he would turn his face from here to there, and I was waiting that he would ask this question. I will have a chance, and that day he did not ask that question to anybody, and nobody got a chance to talk to Baba. That way, so if it is not destined that he will talk to you, whatever you may try, whatever you may do, he is in India. If you know, there was one company which was called as the Bajaj, and they would produce scooters, and they had a very good slogan, and that slogan was that you you can never beat a Bajaj. That means you cannot be smart over that. So you can never be smart over Baba. He would always overshadow you. So this is one of my humorous experiences. But there are some significant observations also during the Shri program, which are worth sharing. And that is 
one of the very great lovers, very close lovers of Faber was Dr. C.D. Deshmukh and he was a professor of philosophy and he was a very very close to Baba and he could go to Baba any time uninvited and that was the opening to Baba and what was happening during this program there was a very good singing program and the singer was one of the greatest singers of India that was Begum Akhtar and her style is unique, matchless and she was singing there and Dr. Deshman was in the front row he was sitting there and he was a scholar of Sanskrit. So now this lady is singing the Indian classical style, a particular type of song. And Dr. Deshmukh would try to copy her and that too in Sanskrit. Some verses would be, he would be remembering something and she is singing some ghazal in Urdu or Persian. And this professor, Baba's closest one, is trying to copy that in some other language. And Baba got so desperate. At one point he asked Harris to just take him outside the hall and told him that as long as this program is come going, don't enter this. <laughs> so now he has been sent out of the hall and at the door he is standing there and with folded hand he is praying to Baba, Baba please allow me, please allow me. And Baba was ignoring for some time but later on he allowed him and told him now sit quiet, don't do it again. And the song is that singing is still going on and after five six minutes he does again because he would forget what he's doing he was being overwhelmed by that situation and this is one of the intimate things we would not understand we were new so we were not understanding Baba's ways and we were thinking how this person is behaving he should not behave like that that was our idea but later on these things were revealed to us then another thing was that he used to put on a cap, black cap, Indian style. And every time he would tell other Baba lovers that this has been given to me by Baba. Some people who were keen observers, one day they pointed him out that Dr. Deshmukh, you have been telling us that this cap is given to you by Baba, but we are observing that you are putting this for last eight years. And how is that it is so brand new? Just shining cap, otherwise caps they get some dirt and oil and this and that. But for last eight years we are observing you, so how is that? How much care you take? So he says, do you think me to be a fool? Am I a stupid person? Baba has given me a cap which I am saving in my trunk safely. And every time I purchase a new cap of the same kind and I gave that cap a hug of Baba's cap and I put on and when this becomes a spoil, I again purchase another cap and I do that. So these things we were not understanding but one time later on, Baba's sister Mani Auntie told us that if you behave like a stranger with Baba, Baba would also behave like a stranger with you but if you are intimate to you, he would give you all liberty and that was the intimacy that Professor uh, Deshmukh was enjoying he was a professor of philosophy and his behavior sometimes would be like a philosopher. He would be much forgetful and people would have a chance to laugh at him. But what intimacy he was building in his relationship with Baba that nobody would knew, though nobody would understand. And this is what we have two sides of humor also. One side is to laugh, but one side is the deeper relationship with Baba. So these are certain observations with Baba gave us opportunity to see and later on understand and remember. Thank you so much. Just two observations before Urmila takes over. One is, before Baba, if there were correspondence in Hindi and Marathi, it was Bauchi's duty to read those letters and talk to Baba about them. And if the letters came in English, it was Hiraj who read the letters to Baba. I had written a letter to Baba which uh, Erich had read it in my presence. I was, I was at Purvasar when that letter was read out. Oh, and the other observation is, and Dolly rightly pointed out that if an order is given to A, that order is only meant for A. The others don't have to mind that order. It's not meant for you. It's only meant for the person whom the order is given. I had a big order and a small order after Rupila. 
Jai Baba. Gokaran said that he never get an opportunity to have a communication direct with Meher Baba. But Meher Baba, in front of him only, gave me an opportunity to have the communication. It was 6th of June 1965. We were going for our educational program to Bombay and I wrote a letter to Mayor Baba that if you permit, we would break down our journey and come and have your darshan at Guru Prasad and then proceed to Bombay. And Baba wrote, if because I was selected for that until that time his selection letter was not with us. So Baba wrote, if Gokaran is also selected, then you can come. So the letter of Baba comes and along with it, Gokaran's selection letter also comes. Because Baba knows that both of us have to go together. Also have an opportunity to have Baba's darshan at Guru Prasad on 6th of June at 4 o'clock. And then we, we were on our way. We kept our luggage on station and we were going to Guru Prasad. And I was thinking because I wrote a letter, maybe just two of us will be there, we will take darshan and then we will immediately go and catch a train. But when we reached Guru Prasad, I saw that the hall is jam-packed. And my foolish mind started bothering me. So many people are there. We are coming at the end. And how we would have darshan and how we will catch the train at 4.30. Because Baba is going to start darshan at 4. And that ma that thought is kept me bothering. We entered the hall from the back door and till today I do not understand how people gave us way to walk and we were sitting in the front row. Two of us on the carpet, we were sitting in the front row. Still the mind was troubling me. What will happen to my train? We will miss the train. At 4 o'clock, Baba comes and that was the first time Bhavji was an interpreter. First and last time. Because later on Bhavji, he always remembers this incidence and he always mentions that because Urmila wrote this letter that she wanted to have a Darshan, opportunity for darshan, I just told Baba, Baba, so many people could not come for regular darshan, why don't you allow them also? So 700 people were allowed to come for that darshan. So he would always say, you were the cause for that. And Erich got very upset that Baba is not keeping well and you are putting so much stress on him. So now you manage it. So Bhavji was there for interpreting. Bhavji comes with Baba and as at 4 o'clock they come and Bhavji says, Urmila, Gokaran, you have a train at 4.30. Both of you come and have this darshan first. So we both stood up and that time we were allowed to bow down to his feet. So I just tried my best to bow down to his feet. But again, Bhavji said, before I could just bow down, Bhavji said, Urmila, Baba wants to know what is your educational qualification. I stood with folded hands and I said, Baba, I am MSc. He says, what subject? I said, Baba, the MSc is master's Master, master in science. So I said, Baba, botany. He said, what division did you get? Division is the grade or something what you call. I said, first. 
Then he said, Baba wants to know what position in the university. I said, third. Baba, I got third position. And then Baba said, like this. So Bhavji says, Baba says, both of you are first class. And then Baba says, take your darshan and go. So both of us took his darshan and we went and we got the tray at the railway station. Somebody was shouting, two rupees a birth, two rupees a birth. So we paid four rupees. We got two births reserved. We traveled to Bombay. Quite late in my life, when I read something of Francis Brevesor, I understood what Baba said. Both of you are first class. That means one thing before I come to the final conclusion, one thing was that ours is a arranged marriage. We never knew each other. We were education in different universities, in different cities, in different years, but our educational qualification is the same. Both of us are masters in botany, both of us are first class, both of us are third in the university and the equal, the total number of marks that we obtained in the final exams were also equal. Who could arrange all this? We had equal job, equal salary, equal designation till our retirement. So he kept both of us at par. He gave equal opportunities to both of us for help, uh, to have an opportunity for his work. And <coughs> he always kept both of us together. But once when I was reading Francis Brevesons some article, it was, he said that if you do anything for the Lord, he should show his satisfaction to it. And it's a worldly way. If you like somebody's work, you should say first class. So it was Baba's satisfaction over our education that he said, both of us, both of you are first class. That means he was satisfied with our education. And till today, he kept us reading, reading, reading. I don't do any other work so much as I do reading because it is what he has destined for me. So, thank you very much.